Hello, welcome to Outside Xbox. You're watching Show of the Week. I'm Mike. And I'm Andy. This week I've been playing Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. Oh, that's cute. And now I owe Tom Nook £36,000. So, it's going to be a few changes around here. Uh, no Christmas presents because I spent all my money. Right. Uh, also, I mortgaged the YouTube channel to Tom Nook. What? Uh, but don't worry, he says you'll barely notice the difference. So this week on Show of the Week, we are talking about the great mortgage deals available from Tom Nook. That's right, Mike. He's got low, low rates on a range of one-room shacks that no, you... No, we're not doing this. I came here ready to talk about Player Alone's Battleground, so that's what we're going to do. <sighs> Fine. All right, then, we'll talk about PUBG. Yes, we will, Andy. We're get killed by a raccoon. It'll be your fault. <laughs> it's coming out on December 12th. We've only got a limited amount of time to talk about PUBG. All right, well, you know all about PUBG. I've I not do. played it because I haven't had anything I can play it on yet. Well, wow. very gonna... soon that's going to change, Andy. Yeah. So, shall I tell you about the reasons I'm excited about PUBG on Xbox One? Yeah, can you list, can you do seven of them? Can no. you do seven? I could do one. <laughs> Numerical list. You do one, is yeah. there only one reason? <laughs> one reason. Oh, okay. It's PUBG on Xbox One. Yeah. Shall I tell you the reasons I'm not excited? <laughs> okay. This positivity right. has gone on for too long on this show. Sure, right. Um, okay, the reasons I'm worried are A, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm going to A now. I've done one for the, okay, the positive right, things. I'm going a. to A now. Move um, to different, like alpha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. the Greek alphabet. Right. Um, we've not seen it running on Xbox One. We've been to a lot of preview things and events and Was that not on Xbox One? No, it was all running on PC. I saw the box there. Was yeah. that lie? No, well, it was, it was a pretend box and there was a PC under the thing. No one has seen this game running on Xbox One yet. And it's coming out in like a matter of days. Yeah. So that's alarming, I would say. <laughs> right. Okay. Should we panic? <laughs> Don't panic yet. I'm yeah. going to panic. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you should, Luke. Um, should we take to the streets and start burning cars? Yes, Luke. Reason B. Um, it's going to be game preview, so it's, this is not, yeah, I mean obviously the, the um, PC version is still in early access, but game preview is Xbox's version of early access, and that means it could just be rubbish and broken. It's entirely possible it would be rubbish and broken. So you'll get all excited, it'll be like an early Christmas morning on December the 12th to play PUBG, and it might be like the servers are falling over, everything's glitching, everything might be wrong. But if you put it on early access, you can charge people for it and then go... Correct. And they go, it doesn't work, and you go, well, it's early access. Yeah, what exactly. did you expect, dummy? Yeah, well, quite. I'm not sure if they'll put the dummy on the end there. Might seem a bit condescending. I mean, it'll be implied. <laughs> yeah, but it will be Certainly. implied. <laughs> so that's another reason I, right. I'm slightly worried. Oh, wow. um, okay. And the other... Uh, I thought this was going to be all that beat. Yeah, I know, no, it's a real downer. Yeah, I'm just ruining everyone's Christmas. Maybe it'll be good. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, and reason, reason C... Uh, is obviously, um, if you have an Xbox One X, congratulations, well done. Um, their aim for that is to get it to run at 60 frames per second. But That's a lot of frames. on the regular Xbox One, they're like, maybe 30? Maybe if you're 30. Lucky. So I'm a little bit worried that uh, it's a very demanding game. It's 100 players all yeah. on the same server. I've been playing Fortnite. That's got 100 players. That's true, but that's running on, I don't know. It's good. That's, that's the people who made Unreal Engine making a game. So they're probably pretty much on top of that stuff. Anyway, those are just the reasons I'm, I'm worried about it. But the fact remains, it's very exciting that this game is coming to, to Xbox One. And um, hopefully, assuming the launch is fine, and assuming it's not totally unplayable, it's going to be great. I'm really yeah. looking forward to it being a level playing field. My computer is sort of rubbish. Uh, so I feel like, you know, when I'm playing, I'm not getting the frame rates anyway that, that um, uh, okay. other players enjoy. I'm looking for reasons why I'm bad at, uh, <laughs> at PUBG, PUBG right sure, here. Sure. <laughs> Um, at least on the Xbox, it'll be a mostly level playing field, and if you own an Xbox One X, you'll be to have a slight advantage, okay. which I'm fine, I'm okay with. All right, so for people who haven't seen PUBG, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, yes. before, they don't know what we're talking about. Actually, James really likes Player Unknown Battlegrounds. James, uh, sum up why PUBG is good. Uh, do my job for, do my yeah. job for me, James. Because the game's over relatively quickly. I love that. <laughs> Winner. Yeah, like one, one winner. winner that's Proper it. meritocracy. None of this medals for participation, eh, hey, James? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it's a battle royale game. Yeah. 100 players. 
and then and that is whittled down. Whittled down with a shrinking play yeah. space. What's it? How does it work in that compared to Fortnite? Uh, it's almost exactly the same, basically. Right. So uh, it's a circle that that is placed on the map, and then the play space contracts until it's just that circle. Is it constantly, or does it? Is it like Fortnite where it shrinks? Yeah, it shrinks. It, so there's a timer, and, and you see, right, yeah, okay. exactly that. So. Um, uh, just, so yeah, it's, it, you know, almost everything that you know from Fortnite, barring the building, is is in there. Okay, um, but you get the, you get like cosmetic stuff mm -hmm. as you play, right? You get like fancy coats. And yeah, you can pick up coats and things, and, and armor and backpacks and things like that. It's a bit more sort of gritty and realistic, mm -hmm. uh, insofar as a giant battle royale with a hundred people can be realistic. Um, but it's it, it's it, it's a really really good game. Basically, if you if you haven't had the chance because you don't have a PC to play this game, it is going to be really really exciting, um, and it'll be worth getting on board with even if it is sort of slightly wobbly at the start because it's just such a fun game. And, and as James said, you know, that thing of kind of bite-sized games, you know, and the game will last 15 or 20 minutes if you win it. If you lose it, you might be out and into another server within five minutes, mm. if you're me. Plus the other thing that's coming up, uh, and there will have been some footage of this at the Game Awards last night, but we probably aren't allowed to show it, but the desert map is coming. Oh, uh, yeah. And that's pretty exciting as well, because we've been playing the same single island in Player Unknown Battlegrounds since the, fir the first sort of launch of it on Early Access. And now this, there's going to be this new map, there's new vehicles that they've announced and things like that. So Yeah, the game has vehicles, mm. well, which Fortnite doesn't. So hey, that's true. does that's that true. change it up a lot? It does if you're trying to escape the contracting play space, because it means you can jump into a buggy and like, zip right, around. Okay. And also you can run people over. But there's a, there's a degree of sort of vulnerability to vehicles. What I really like about the vehicles is you can park them up and then use them as sort of mobile cover. So ah, if, cool. you're, okay. if the play space has got to its last sort of stage, and you're trapped there with a bunch of people. If you've got a vehicle, you at least have a bit of cover, and everyone else might be in the middle of a, a sort of field. So, um, can blow it up, they can blow it up, yes. So you don't want to hang around too close. Says a man who's been blown up. Yeah. The, <laughs> the look of a man who suffered that. The thousand yard stare of a man yeah. whose vehicle was blown up. <laughs> It is enormously exciting that it's coming on, on console. I'm, I'm very excited, but I, I'm also slightly wary of this launch period. I think that's the key thing. I, I reckon within a month's time, everything will be running fairly swimmingly. Yeah, so buyer beware, mm. because it might be rubbish when it launches. Yes. But maybe, you know, maybe it won't. Maybe, maybe it will be it won't. well. No, I, so. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm only basing it on the fact that we haven't seen it running on an Xbox yet, and it is, it is out in a few days. Do they ever explain why you're doing a battle royale? Not so, really, no. So. It just, you're on the island, you're dropped from a plane, no explanation whatsoever. Um, no real justification for what this strange zone is that's closing in on you, or why you would agree to participate in this thing. Um, okay, I mean, I, let's make up Is that going to be a problem? No, 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 I'll make up my own law. Okay. My own rich law. <laughs> um, Fan so, fiction. you are in uh, medieval times. Right. But a big cache of weapons fell through a time hole. I mean, you know there's AKs and, in there and stuff. Yeah, they fell through a time hole, okay. Mike. Keep up. Oh. God. Started a plane. Which also, the, the plane flew so fast, it tore a rift in the space. You know that episode of The Twilight Zone when the plane goes back in time? Only you know that episode of The Twilight Zone. All right, there's no plot. Fine. <laughs> so who do you play as? Uh, just some random person. Oh, okay. And then why are they battle royaling? Uh, yeah, I don't know that either. I guess there isn't a plot. What? How am I supposed to get invested if there's no plot? <laughs> oh, Jane. All too easily. Not having a storyline doesn't hurt games at all. Just look at the board game Battleships. That didn't have a plot and they still managed to make a whole film about it co-starring Rihanna. Not a very good one, but still. These excellent no-narrative games should have no problem keeping your attention. The game that turned multiplayer battles royale into a phenomenon, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds recently set the record for the most number of concurrent players on Steam, 1.5 million. He should probably change his name to Player Actually Pretty Well Known now. The game doesn't bother explaining the story, the setting, or even the rules of a battle royale, it just kicks you out of the back of a transport plane and leaves you to work out how to survive yourself. And yes, hiding under some stairs and quietly sobbing is a valid tactic. But if you really must have a storyline for your headcanon, just imagine the one from that movie. What was it called again? Oh yeah, Battle Royale. Three, two, one. 
The original release of Carmageddon was famously plot-free, but it came dangerously close to having an actual story on not one, but two separate occasions. Originally, it was planned to be a Mad Max game, and when that deal fell through, it very nearly became a sequel to 70s movie Death Race 2000. In the end, the developers called it Carmageddon and provided absolutely zero justification for why a bunch of sci-fi wacky races rejects were slamming into each other and wiping out the population of a small country in messy hit-and-run incidents. There was even a bonus for hitting the poor guy employed to wave the starting flag. Probably for the best there's no plot. If I knew about that guy's life and family, I'd go to pieces. Not as many pieces as him, but still. One of the most popular games in history, Minecraft has no time for a plot. Instead, it's a huge sandbox where you create your own fun. And by fun, we mean giant rude sculptures. But don't pretend you're recreating the Sistine Chapel. Yes, the main character has a name, Steve, but that's his entire character biography, that he's called Steve. There's also an Ender Dragon, and while it might lead a rich internal life, all we know is that it's a total pain to fight. None of that constitutes an actual narrative. Yes, they finally did add a plot to Minecraft in Minecraft Story Mode, but that was a whole other game, so it doesn't count. If we're going to start taking plots from other games, I'm going with Batman. I am the knight. Normally, Pokemon games have a story. Not necessarily a good story, but it's always there. For mobile spin-off Pokemon Go, reading a load of story text would have only gotten in the way of catching those sweet pokes outside your local Nandos. As it stands, a passing Pokemon prof gives you a free Pokemon, you're recruited into what is essentially a cult based on different primary colours, and then catch as many pokes as you can without any sort of real endgame. Instead, you write your own stories. Stories like, I claimed the gym at the station, but then some other people took it, and I'm not going back out again this evening, not in this weather. You know, classic hero's journey. At first glance, Super Monkey Ball looks like a harrowing tale of animal abuse, with a poor defenseless primate trapped in a perspex ball and forced to undergo increasingly complex animal testing. There's probably a secret level where you spray perfume in its eyes and force feed it lipstick. The only slight flaw in this theory is that the monkey seems to be enjoying the whole thing, getting particularly animated when it rolls across the goal line, leaving us none the wiser as to what's going on and who built all these floating mini-golf courses. If only you could speak, monkey, and perhaps provide a comprehensive and detailed backstory for what's going on. The sequel, Super Monkey Ball 2, introduced what was referred to as a story mode, but frankly, we're still not clear on antagonist Dr. Bad Boon's motivation. <laughs> If you can afford a giant airship slash vacuum cleaner, Dr. Bad Boon, you can afford to buy your own bananas from the supermarket. What exactly was your doctorate in again? Now it's time to see what's written in the YouTube comments and in the menacing looking final demand letters to Andy from Tom Nook. No, not them, just the comments. OK, well, in that case, let's start with the comments on my fiendish quiz in which Mike and Andy did battle armed only with Assassin's Creed trivia. When Ezio journeyed to Constantinople for Assassin's Creed revelations, he was taught how to craft bombs. Name some! Looks like you disappointed commenter Jeffrey Wells, who says, Bets on Andy in the beginning over Mike. Clutch question comes up about bombs. Dang it! Right, how come you didn't have a question about my specialist subject? It's a historical stealth game, Andy. The whole thing should be your specialist subject. Fine. Yeah. Commenter Manish Gosh, meanwhile, thinks I was being a bit harsh and says, Jane is a ruthless quiz master. Minus one for sarcasm. Oh no, you did a great job. Uh, minus 10 points for sarcasm. You now have minus 2.5. The quiz is over. Yeah, it is for you with that terrible score. Oh, damn. Commenter Zilla is number one thinks they know what really happened here, saying, So Bayek accidentally lost his finger and everyone just went with it. So he was like, oh well, just have to go along with it now. Yeah, it was an accident, but he styled it out. Right, he meant to do it. Now everyone else has to do it. It's part of the creed. Now you cut your own finger off. Moving on, here are the comments on this video in which we took on Hitman's third Patient Zero mission, a fiendish sniper challenge. So that's the guy we're here to kill, Bradley Payne. He's a doctor who's been infecting members of the militia with that Namazov virus. What a joke. Was that tower always there? No, I'm surprised the militia didn't notice anyone building that. <laughs> <laughs> that seems... The ICA contractors work yeah. fast. <laughs> they just sprung up overnight. Commenter the Dr. Funkenstein is impressed with 47's dedication, saying, That's how you know 47 is the absolute best. He built an entire tower unnoticed just to snipe these guys. Now that's dedication. 
Is there anything that guy can't do? Well, on this mission, he can't start in a clown costume, much to Mike's disappointment. But commenter Andy McPee still has faith. Mike will find a way to do the mission in the clown suit, just standing there in the tower staring at the targets, gripping a shuriken and exploding them with sheer force of will. Truly, he will have gone full Mike. Ah, never go full Mike. Remember last year's Christmas party? No. Lucky. Maybe, can I shoot the fire extinguisher? Yeah, why not be an accident? Is it definitely him? Whoa! 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 Look that was that. amazing! Also non-target kill. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Oh Idiot. man! Forty-seven. But it looked cool, Diana. It looked cool. He wasn't cool. a mechanic, was he? Oh no, Bradley Payne's escaping. <laughs> Finally, commenter Overlord, mm, not hugely impressed with our methodical sniping skills on this Patient Zero mission, saying, "I'd call this mission Patience Zero." What? I haven't got all day. The quickest way to do it would be just snipe everyone in the level, and then I would definitely get all the infected. Okay, finally this week, let's look at the comments on last week's show all about Fortnite Battle Royale and the video game bus journeys worse than your commute. Because let me tell you, while bus journeys in the real world might be uncomfortable or long or make you sit next to a total weirdo, at least they don't usually involve zombies and explosions and plummeting 10,000 feet to a war zone below, as in these video game commutes. Some good suggestions from you guys, such as this from commenter MyIris24 who says, How could you guys have forgotten the tour bus ride in the start of Far Cry 4? You know, the one that gets stopped by a bunch of trigger-happy dudes wielding AKs and ends up with you being kidnapped. That's just a bit of local colour. Someone gets stabbed to death with a pen. Red is a colour. Comment to Goalie Gussie, meanwhile, thinks that the position of the Mario hat makes it look like, wait, has Mario hijacked outside Xbox? Someone should check on Sonic, make sure he's okay. Haha, <laughs> of course not. No. Only Mike. He's mostly the same, he just jumps a lot more. He says wahoo. Honestly, you barely notice the difference. Oh, so it's like a serrated dagger and a stick of dynamite. Classic. Jane, I think that's a Christmas tree and a, a, a candy cane. <laughs> sure. What kind of weird Christmas are you having? Finally this week, commenter Caitlin RC says, I have that advent calendar. Wait, did Jane steal my advent calendar? Uh, it's not my fault if you're going to cheap out on something as important as locks, Caitlin. <laughs> okay, I'm going to head back in. Yeah. You wouldn't want this one anyway. Someone's eating all the chocolates. Imagine that. It's not even the 25th. Some people. That's it for Show of the Week, but before we go, we've just got to get your OX rating for this episode. Ooh, four out of five, so close to a perfect score. Ooh, I know, uh, quickly, press the like button. Hey, top marks, amazing, great work. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Five out of five, well, I know, really good. Oh no, I think it's Tom Nook's goons. They're after me thanks to your little stunt earlier. What kind of goons is he gonna send? He's a raccoon. More raccoons? They have a nasty bite. All right, Andy, I'll catch you later. That's him! You got him, fellas! Should have paid back your spells, Andy. Do I not? Go limp! Cover your face! It's where the tastiest meat is. Oh, no, they found it.